your Bibles to Mark chapter 4. The band sound good today. I ate y'all Wheaties this morning. Somebody ate their Wheaties this morning. Ate their Wheaties this morning. I need a little more JJ though. I'm going to have to turn up a little more JJ in the house. A little more JJ in the house. It's like a cowbell. I need a little more cowbell. And y'all doing all right today? God chase us. Are y'all doing all right today? Was anybody at the night of worship last night? Was that something? God chase us. Was that something? Y'all get too used to amazing stuff. Y'all see amazing stuff and be like, that's all right. Last night, man, we had um, we had Place for Life in the house last night. They did an amazing job. Erica started singing in Spanish. Y'all wasn't ready for that. Y'all wasn't ready for that. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, who else do we have? We had Josh Hurt in the house last night, and uh, he did an amazing job. He had y'all clapping, and I was like, oh, we're going to go to church, huh? And he just took y'all on to church. I looked over there, I saw Aaron. I said, oh, we're doing something different. Okay, that's fine. The worship music has ceased. We on a different, <laughs> we in a different place right now. And then uh, my aunt Cassandra Robertson was in the place. She taught me a new song. That was a blessing, boy. That just, that's just a blessing. When a national recording artist can just get down on their knees in our church and just worship like for real worship, not like for play concert worship, like for real worship. It was a blessing. It was a blessing. Were you blessed? And then the God Chasers team was up last night. Was it? Okay, I'm going to help y'all with this. My dad used to say, it's a sad dog that won't wag his own tail. <laughs> I said the God Chasers team was up last night. Yeah. Amen. And we got to do about seven, about seven of our own songs, which was pretty awesome. And I loved how, you know, like nobody else in the room knew him, but y'all knew him. So y'all was going crazy. And everybody else was like, oh, this must be good. <laughs> this must be good right here. They start playing that music to I Wanna Run. Lord have mercy. Y'all was ready for that. We might sing that later. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. But first, I want to finish this series, amen. I want to finish this series. Has this series blessed you guys? Good. I want to finish this series today, and I have a lot to go over. <laughs> I have a lot to go over. So I, I need y'all to come with me today, okay? Are y'all with me? Then we got some other stuff to do, so we'll, we'll take care of some business. But uh, let's, let's just read together. Uh, John, excuse me, <laughs> Mark. <laughs> the tech team people was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Mark chapter 4, verse 3. Listen to this. Turn to your neighbor and say, listen to this. Whenever Jesus say, listen, you better listen. Whenever God say, listen, you better turn. He who has an ear, let him. Look at your other neighbor, the one you don't like as much as the one you just talked to. Ooh, starting stuff. Look at your other neighbor and say, listen to this. This is going to bless you right here. He says, behold, a sower went out to sow, and he was sowing, and he sowed, and he was sowing, and he was sowing, and he was sowing, and he was sowing. Sometimes it don't work the first time. You got to. It's a multiplicity of seed that's necessary, amen. You thought because you paid tithes once. And the window didn't open. This ain't real. It's a principle, amen? It's a principle. 
It's not the lottery. It's a principle. Okay. All right. He says, he says, behold, a sower went out to sow, and he, as he was sowing, some seed fell beside, uh, uh, some seed fell beside the road. And the birds came and ate it up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil. And immediately it sprang up because it had no root. Somebody say, do you have root? It had no root. And after the sun had risen, it was scorched. Mm. And because it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns and thistles and the ugly stuff of life. And the thorns came up and choked it out. You got to be careful that the, 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 the ugly stuff of life is not choking out your seed. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter in course, his course with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice for he has made me glad. My circumstances don't define my God. My God defines my circumstances. I wish y'all helped me preach in here today. Other seed fell, my, my wife told me to preach before I got up, so I'm, I'm, I intend to. <laughs> Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns came up and choked it out, and it yielded no crop. It'd be sad to sow and not yield, sow and not reap, because you let your circumstances choke out your seed. Other seeds fell into good soil. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, I'm good soil. Other seeds fell on good soil. Somebody say, I'm good soil. In fact, don't say it to your neighbor. Just say it to the Lord. Lord, I'm good soil. You can sow, so settle here, settle here, sow here. This is a good place. You can, you can do your work right here because I'm, I'm good soil. And as they grew up, somebody say, grow up. grow up. Yell it. Look at your neighbor. Yell it in their face. Say, grow up. Grow up. Immature plants don't produce fruit. I could, I could give the repentance prayer right now. Immature plants don't produce fruit. Immature, grow up! Other seeds fell on good soil. And as they grew up and increased, they yielded a crop that produced some 30, some 60, and some a hundred and fo a hundredfold. I'm gonna deal with that in just a second. And he was saying, "He who has an ear, let him hear." Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you. We give you praise and honor. Help me, help them. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. High five, five people, and say, "Do you have an ear today? Do you have an ear today? Have an ear today? Go ahead and have your seat." Chauncey, if you can take this and bring me a warm, just bring me like a warm bottle of water, just a regular room temperature. <clears throat> Y'all pray for me today, amen? I need, I, my, my voice is messing up and all this other stuff. Y'all had me in here singing last night like I could sing. I just learned the art of screaming in, t in key. I scream in tone. Amen. Listen, this is going to be the last message from this series. I, I, I really hope that this series helped you, but I can't stay on sewing too long because people stop coming to church and stuff. Not you, your neighbor. People stop. <laughs> All we talked about is. Okay, but I need you to get this because I need you to move from eater to sower. Okay, I'm trying to shift you from eater to, look at your neighbor say, he's trying to shift us. I'm trying to shift because if you're an eater, listen, hear, hear me right here. If you're an eater, you'll always be a needer. Right? Because you got to, the Bible said, give us this day our daily bread. So I got to go back to God and get some more bread because I'm a needer. Every day I got to wake up, please give me some more bread. Give me some more bread. Give me some more bread. And when the hard times come. I, I, get, I get in such a position that, I, that, that I, I feel like I'm starving. And God says, you, you're not starving. What I did was I gave you seed. And you keep looking for bread. But God said, if you plant the seed, you'll have the bread. Y'all with me today? Okay. I mean, I, I, I'll get into it. So, but I, I, I want to get out of this series. And then we're going to move into the, a series that we're calling Game Changer. I believe that there are some, there are some people 
some places and some things that have changed the game for you. Amen. You, you don't have to amen and yeah, I'll teach you about it. But I, I love that we talk about Jesus like he was a baby. <laughs> he was born a baby. He didn't stay a baby. Amen. So I don't want to celebrate the baby Jesus this Christmas. I want to celebrate the full grown defender of the universe. I want to celebrate somebody who died and who changed the game for everything that happened. Do you know time changed after Jesus was born? Do you understand how significant that is? That everything shifts after Jesus. And that's how it should be in your life. I'm not going to preach this. I'll preach it when I, when I preach it. But everything in your life is supposed to shift after Jesus. Are y'all with me today? But before I get into that, I want to finish this today. And I want to finish it with, 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 with a pretty hefty sermon. If you don't usually take notes, today is the day you need to take notes. Okay? You need to take notes because I'm, I'm going to go through these as quickly as I can so we can uh, go uh, get out of here and eat some turkey. Y'all coming back? If, who coming back for the... Uh... Amen. We're going to have a, a, a little family dinner, an early Thanksgiving, a pre-Thanksgiving kickoff. Um, I just wanted to sit down with my, with my wife and the people who belong to this church and uh, enjoy Thanksgiving together. So we're going to have a Thanksgiving. We might not have a lot of turkey and dressing. It might be more like fried chicken and mashed potatoes. <laughs> we're going to be thankful for it. Amen. We're going to bless it. Amen. We're going to bless it. Thank God for the sacrifice that the chicken made so that I may live. Amen. It died. Come on, y'all ain't with me. <laughs> he died that I may live. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> All right. So let's get into this. Um, so today I want to talk about, I, I, I want to talk about, I want to talk about the sower, but I want to talk specifically about things that belong to the sower. But first, I want to give you some context. Somebody say context. context. And a, a, a lot of times in Christendom, we talk about concepts in church, but we don't talk about context. And if you have the concept without the context, you might not truly understand the, the fruit of the concept. Does that make sense? So I might talk to you about something, but I don't describe to you the circumstance. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me help you in this way. Uh, people know uh, a little bit about your life. But if they knew the whole context, they would understand why you had to make the decisions that you had to make. See, you think... Uh, you, don't, you, don't, you, you don't know enough about my context to judge my decisions. Uh, you don't know enough about who I am or where I came from. And so I want to talk about context. And we talked about uh, Matthew 13 or Mark chapter uh, 4. We talked about the same, the same parable of the sower. But we talked about it from the context of, of the sower, the seed, and the soil. Are y'all with me today? But we didn't spend enough time in my, in my estimation on the sower. We talked about the seed, how valuable the seed is, and how you are a seed planted in certain places at certain times. You are a seed. And, and we also talked about the soil because it, it, it doesn't matter how good the seed is if the soil's bad. Boy, I'm preaching already. But now I want to give you context because context brings clarity. Say that. Context brings clarity. See, once you have the right context, it should change something in your life. My problem with Christians today is that we want revelation without revolution. Okay? I, I don't want to hear something cute from you that don't change something on the inside of me. Uh, I don't care if it rhymes. Will it change something on the inside of me? I don't care if you thought of every word in the dictionary that start with a P. Is it going to change my life? I don't care how alliterative your text is or how beautifully you articulate it. If it don't change something on the inside of me, I, I don't want it. You, you could keep it. Amen. Pastor, teacher, prophet, you can, you can keep it if it's not changing something on the inside of me. And your relationship with God, amen, should be changing something on the inside. Look at your neighbor and say, are you changing? <laughs> Come on. So I, 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 so, so I want to give you context so you can understand. The context of this particular pericope is this. You are the sower. Now, I want you to get this because in the original story, it, you can be 
God can be seen as the sower and you be the seed. God can be seen as the soil, sower and you can be the soil. But in this context, I want to talk about it as you are the soil, the sower. Now, hear me right here. A lot of times we claim promises from the Bible that don't belong to us. Every promise in the Bible doesn't belong to every person. Some promises have qualifiers. You don't get the promise unless you qualify. You got to be this tall. Some of y'all need more qualifiers in your life. We can't be in a relationship. You, I'm not talking about height. I'm talking about character. You got to be this tall to ride this ride. I know it's unfair, but you got to be this tall to ride this ride. I can't deal with nobody with low morals, with low character. I can't. You're going to pull me down. I, I, you got to be a certain height. And so I want to talk about the sower today, but I want to talk about this. I want to talk about 20, 20, somebody say 20. 20. I want to talk about 20 mysteries revealed to the sower. 20 mysteries revealed to the sower. Y'all ready? They cut the time off this TV, so that means I got all the time in the world. So this is just letting y'all know. When they turn the time off, that means I don't have, yeah. Okay, so... 20 mysteries revealed. It. No, I'm, 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 I'm going to get through this, okay? I'm going to get through this. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Okay, all right. Let's go. Y'all ready? Number one. Somebody say number one. Now, y'all going to have to keep up with these numbers because mine not numbered. I just know it's 20. Just know in my knower that it's 20. Okay? Y'all ready? Number one. Number one. If I am a sower, I look like God. If I am a sower, I look like God. If I'm a so, so, so I told you guys, when, when Jesus is giving this parable, we don't quite know, nor does he quickly define who the sower is. But what I want to do is look like God. Now, how do I look like God? Well, John 3, 16 says this, for God so loved the world that he, so when I'm, I look like, okay, y'all got it already. We're moving on. Okay, so whenever I'm giving, whenever I'm sowing, I look like God. So even if Jesus wasn't particularly describing me in this context, he was describing God. If I want to look like God, I got to be sowing. A sower sows. A sow. Somebody say a sower sows. So I need you to understand that if you're ever going to look like God, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to look like this. A sower went out to sow. Somebody say, I'm a sower. You got to believe it in your heart. You got to believe it in your mind. Because if you don't believe that first phrase, I'm a sower, none of the rest of these 19 things are going to apply to you. I said, if you don't believe that first thing, none of these 19 things are going to apply to you. Does that make sense? Okay. Somebody say, I'm a sower. Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready? Okay. Here we go. No, number... Mine not numbered. <laughs> Somebody say, I'm a sower. I'm a sower. I, grow what I, sow. I grow what I sow. I grow what I sow. Pastor Dante, what does that mean? It means I grow what I sow. Whatever, so, whatever, whatever, <laughs> let me read it to you. Whatsoever a man soweth, that also will he reap. Whatsoever a man puts in the ground, I grow what I sow. This is Galatians 6 and 7. Uh, since y'all don't believe me, like Prego. It says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, he will also. Now, this is scary to some people. Because you know what you sow. But I, I got a secret for you. If, you. if you sow better, you'll have better. Y'all not ready to shout. If you sow better, you'll grow better. Amen. Look at somebody and say, if you sow better, you'll grow better. Oftentimes we keep complaining about our life, our station, our circumstance, why we don't got no friends. He who wants friends should show himself friendly. If I sow better, I grow better. 
you keep wanting people to feed you with stuff that you're not willing to feed. Does that make sense? You got to be willing to pour out. If you, oh, hear me right here. If you want people to pour into your life, you got to be willing to pour out. And what you pour out will look like what you get back. Everybody mean to me. Check the, Tabby, I'm going to get in trouble right here. Go start the car. Some of the most abrasive people that I ever met in my life are the ones that are most offended all the time. She was mean to me. Girl, <laughs> you is just the meanest person I know. And now you upset because somebody was mean. You going to grow what you sow. Try, if you want a new harvest, plant a new seed. There you go. All right. All right. Y'all ready? All right. I'm moving on. No, number Y'all with me still? Y'all got lost already. We got to get to 20. Y'all not even at three. What number we on? All right. He supplies seed to the sower. Okay? He supplies seed to the sower. Listen, this is a mystery that's revealed in the word of God. I need you to get this. 2 Corinthians 9 and 10 says this. Now he supplies, who is he? Jesus, God, Holy Spirit, all the same thing. You can't get one of them and not the other one. You get them all at the same time. Just talk. Okay. Uh, sorry, I fixed some stuff. Uh, 2 Corinthians 9 and 10. Now he who supplies the seed to the sower and bread to the eater for food will also supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Now, you got to understand this. I, 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 I love the bread. I've needed the bread. The Bible calls Jesus the bread of life. I, I, I love the bread. I, I, I need the bread. Give us this day, our daily bread. I want the daily bread, amen? But, but I, I, I want to be a sower. And if I want to be a sower, I can't just deal with bread. I got to deal with seed. I understand that seed is bread in process. Are y'all with me today? But if I can get, listen, if I can get my seed to grow, then I'll have bread. Uh, Lord, have mercy. Somebody shut the door. If I can get my seed. Y'all didn't see that. It's okay. Yeah, if, I have, if I have seed, listen, if I have seed in the ground, then I have bled, bread plentifully. Does that make sense? It might not make sense to everybody, but it should be one or two people in here that say, I got seed in the ground. I got seed in the ground. Listen, everybody can't just upset me. I got seed in the ground. Everybody can't just make me mad. I, I, I don't need, I, I got enough joy to get through my week. Some of, some of us come to church and we don't have enough bread to get us through the parking lot. I need enough seed that'll get me through my week. I need to be okay on Monday. If you if you happy in here on Sunday and, and you depressed on Monday, you don't have seed, you got bread. And you got to wake up on Monday and say, Lord, please give me some more bread. Lord, please give me. And the beautiful thing about our God is he'll give you more bread. But boy, if you had some seed, you could go into your job and change everything. You could go into your job because you know that even your boss don't have power over you. Oh, man, I'm a so he supplies seed to the sower. Somebody said he supplies seed to the sower. I, I love this little part. This is just a, sort of part A on, the, on, on number three. He says, he says this. He says he supplies seed to the sower and bread for food and will supply and multiply the seed for sowing. He said we'll supply and multiply, multiply the bread. Multiply the bread. Okay, but, the, you know, God loves everybody the same, right? So why, do, why would he multiply the seed and not the bread? Because I made an investment in some people. I made an investment in some people. And God said, I'm sowing seed into you because I need to multiply the seed. Bread doesn't multiply. You just eat it. But I'm sowing into your life because I know that if I can get it to you, I can get it through you. Does that make sense? 
Somebody say, I'm a sower. Here we go. What number we on? My gift will make room for me. Lord have mercy, Jesus. We only on number four. Okay. <laughs> my gift, somebody say, my gift will make room for me. Proverbs 18 and 16 says this. A man's matan, matan. Somebody say matan. A man's matan will make room for him. A man's gift will make room for him. Somebody understand something. Matan means a gift given. Now, we think, Casey, we think when we say a man's gift will make room for him, that it means my talent. My talent will make room for me. But, but your talent is useless if it's not given. My talent is no good to anybody if it's not given. It's not valuable until it's given. And when I give it away, when I give it away, when I give it away, all of a sudden it starts making room for me. You keep wondering why you're in uncomfortable in your space that you're in, but you got to learn how to give away the gifts that God has given you. If you have the gift of gab, if you have the gift to make friends, if you have the gift to show up in a place and change an environment, God said that'll start making room for you. You don't have to make room for yourself. My gift will I don't have to worry about what our church is, where we fit in. All we have to do is keep giving out our gifts and giving out our gifts and giving out our gifts. And all of a sudden, city councilmen and state people start calling here, talking about what can we do to partner with you? Because my gift will make room. Let me help you right here. If you feel uncomfortable on the level you own, start giving out your gift. You feel com- uncomfortable in the place you're in. My gift will make room for me. I wish I could talk to y'all about y'all jobs for just a little bit. You want to get promoted, but soon, at 359, you're like, I'm out of here. I'll see y'all. See, I had a time card. Nobody got time cards. I'm like, that's how old I am. I'm like, click, clack. Y'all remember the time card machine? It made that one. Click, clack, y'all. I'm gone. You want everybody in the office to know you. Click, clack, y'all. I'm gone. 359. But if I learn how to just pour a little bit more, oh, I'm, I'm going to get you. If, if right before I left, I just went to see my boss. Hey, I'm about to be out. You good? You need anything? You straight? You good? All right, you good? You good? All right, you good? Can you go to the kitchen and grab me a bottle of water? I don't know who they think I am. Now, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get paid to grab people water. Okay. Stay on the level you on. I gotta get. I gotta give y'all context. Y'all, uh, it's my church. I gotta give y'all context. God said your gift will make room. Gift will make room for you. Your gift will make room. Are y'all with me today? The Bible says, and brings him before great men. A, a man's gift will make room for him and bring him before. Listen, listen. Your gift will pull you to. Oh man, your gift will pull you to your promise. You'll just be trying to be nice to somebody, and all of a sudden, your phone will ring, and they'll say, hey, remember that one time you had done that one thing for me? Because of that, do, do me a favor. I'm, I'm going to elevate you to this place. I'm going to move you to this place. And you didn't even intend. You were just being generous, but your gift will. Remember, I said it's not, a, it's not about the principal. It's about the principal, the prince of. Your gift will pull you into the right place. It'll pull you. I can't stay right here. I got to move on. You keep trying to fit in. You're not called to fit in. You're called to stand out. Your gift will make room for you. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, what number are we on? It's worth more in God's hands. It's worth less in my hands. Talk about the tithe for just a second, but I don't want to scare nobody, so just hang on. Buckle your seatbelt. The Bible says, if you give him a dime, he'll open a window. It's worth more in his hands than it is. It's nothing to you. Some of y'all, your tithe is what you spend at Starbucks every month. 
but you are eater. So you eat your seed. And then you wonder why the window is not open, the windows of opportunity, the windows of blessing, the windows that could cover me and keep me and take care of me. But I, I got to learn how to put, if I give it to God, if I give the dime to God, God said, I'll have abundance in my life. I want to help you with this because we're going to move to the end of the year and we're going we're gonna to get to this place. But I need you to understand before we even get to talking about, talking about a real game changing seed. Talking about a real game changer. See, I need you to know that it's just the dimes. It's 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 the little things that, 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 you think, that you think are worthless. God said, if you put them in my hand, they'll be worth more. Does that make sense? Can I move on from here? All right, that's it. Now you can unbuckle your seatbelt. You're free to walk about the cabin. Okay? What number we on? The promise never looks like the produce. Okay, we talked about this last week a little bit, but I need you to understand this. The promise never looks like the produce. You start with a seed. Somebody say you start with a seed. You start with a seed, but you don't end with a seed. You start with a seed. You got to believe, oh, you got to believe that this little extra thing I'm doing to be generous or to be nice or to help somebody or to bless somebody, this little extra thing will result in fruit in my life. Does that make sense? Are y'all with me today? This little thing will result in fruit in my life. What are you doing now that's going to result in fruit in your life? Because if you're a sower, you're always thinking about, what am I doing now? What am I doing now that's going to result in fruit in my life? It's, it, listen, I didn't spend all this time in college for nothing. I, I, I went there because it's resulting in fruit in my life. Are y'all with me today? I, I didn't spend all this time in OJT training for nothing. I went there because it's going to produce fruit in my life. We talked about the musicians last week. I, 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 they spent all that time in a dark room because it produces fruit in their life. What, what do you have now that's going to produce something later? I want to I show you something. I got, a, I, I, I got an example. This is a redwood seed. Can we get this up? I don't know if y'all have this. Are y'all with me? A redwood seed. No? Yeah? One slide at a time. <laughs> a redwood seed. Okay. Do you see that? I, they, we put the match here so you can kind of see what it looks like comparatively to a match. This is a redwood seed. Somebody say a redwood seed. seed. Now, I want you to move forward. So now skip to the next one. This is a redwood tree. What it started like, what it started like, he who is faithful over a little thing, I will bless you with the, no, 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 stay well, stay with me, God. I will bless you with the much, but you got to be faithful with the little. You got to be faithful with the little. What, is, what are you doing with your little seeds? Okay, what are you doing with, now, we put people in this picture because I wanted you to have perspective. But I made a little note because a lot of times you'll see the people and miss the perspective. I just talked. I said a lot of times you'll focus on the people and you'll miss the perspective. Because you think your seeds are about the people. But your seeds aren't about the people. Your seeds are about the perspective. Now, what I sow into you today, I'm going to produce as something else. Are y'all with me today? But if you get caught up thinking about the principal, you will miss the principal. Do y'all understand where I am? If you get caught up thinking about the person, the people, I ain't going to do nothing for them. They ain't doing nothing for me. I'm just going to get the work. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to sow my seeds. It is the value of the seed. You don't know how valuable your seed is. And God is producing something in the background that you can't see. But if you get blinded by the people, you'll miss the proper perspective. Are y'all with me today? Okay, I got to move on from that. Okay, don't focus on the people. Somebody said, don't focus on the people. 
Okay, have the proper perspective. Have the proper perspective. Okay, uh, here we go. My seeds will outlive me. What's outlive me? I think this is number seven. I'm not absolutely sure. My seeds will outlive me. My seeds, what does that mean, Pastor Dante? Well, see, when you put a seed in the ground, that seed keeps growing. You don't have to monitor it. Oh, Lord. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to be. I'm telling you right now, I've seen it in my life. The promise of God has come back around. Things that I forgot I sowed into people's life. The messages. People come up to me all the time. Remember way back in 2007, you preached a message at your dad's church about this or this or that. I don't even remember preaching that message. It's my seed. It's on the way back to me. And what I'm telling you today is that your seed, oh man, this might just be for two or three of y'all. Your seed is on the way back to you. What you sowed wasn't for nothing. If you just give God a praise right now, I believe that your seed is on the way back to you. Your seed will outlive you. Your seed will outlive you. Hear me right here. Your seed, are, some of y'all sitting in these seats because of prayers your grandma prayed. Your seed are out. Oh. You're not even responsible for why you're here. Somebody pray. Somebody pray for me. Had me on their mind. It took the time to pray for me. Oh, I'm so glad they. Lord have mercy. I'm going to help myself. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. They planted a seed. Do you know that you're the result of somebody's seed? Somebody who loaned me. I'm the result of Mamaldi's seed. Y'all don't got to know who Mamaldi is. Just know that you're looking at the tree. That is the result of her seed. And some of y'all got some Mamaldi's. You need to thank God for your grandma and great-grandma and great-great-grandma who prayed you into the... Can we just take 30 seconds and thank God for the people who prayed us in the place? Somebody pray for me. You understand something? God is too big to bless you. God is too big to bless you. Pastor Dante, you didn't go to church. No, I'm not. Hear me right here. God's, bless, God's blessings are messy. He don't just target you. When God say, when God seeks to bless you, he's, he's getting blessing all over everybody. He is, is, everybody gets saturated in the blessing of God. When he decides to bless you, when he decides to bless your life, when he decides to bless your family, when he decides to cover you, he don't just bless you. He bless your whole lineage. That's why you shouldn't be getting mad when your brother or sister is blessed. I'm in the... I'm in the target area. <laughs> in the target area for a blessing. My God too big to bless a person, to bless a man. My God too, when God steps down, he can't just bless one person. The Bible says, I, he says, when I bless you, if God don't bless a man, he bless a house. He told David, when I bless you, your children are going to be blessed. Your children's children are going to be blessed. Your children's children's children are going to be blessed. Even to the fourth generation. That means your children's 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 children. They don't have no choice about it. Oh, I just hurt myself. Saved or not, believe or not, going to church or not, they don't have no choice about it. Because I'm blessed. Everything behind me is blessed. God's too big to just bless me. Some of y'all been praying about your kids. Pray, oh, hear me right here. Some of y'all been praying about your children and worrying and pacing. Stop worrying and pacing. He who watches over Israel neither sleeps nor slumbers. If he's awake, I'm going to get some sleep. God's too big to bless me. My seeds will outlive me. What I sow now, the enormity of God, hear me right here, the enormity of God's blessing will bring blessing to the people who didn't even earn it. The enormity of God's blessing will bring blessing to people who didn't even earn it. We're always so caught up on the children of Israel. Why God favors them. God didn't favor the children of Israel. 
Ooh, I'm going to get in trouble. God didn't favor the children of Israel. He favored Abraham. <laughs> Boy, I'm preaching in here. God didn't favor the children of Israel. He favored Abraham. But everything born out of Abraham is blessed because of Abraham. What I'm telling you is that everything born out of you will be blessed because of you. And the whole time, even now, look what we, 5,000 years later, we still talking about bless Israel. Bless Israel. Bless, you know what you're really saying? Bless Abraham. Bless Abraham. And, and, and God will do the same thing in your family. He'll do the same. He's not a respecter of person. He's a respecter of faith. But God's too big to just bless Abraham. He, he'll bless 5,000 generations of people. Just to keep a promise to you. My seed will outlive me. Say that. What's next? I told y'all I don't got no clock, so we just, we're going to get there. <laughs> Somebody say, preach on, Pastor Dante. Y'all wrong for lying in church, boy, y'all. <laughs> Come on, can I, can, er, can I finish this? Am I helping somebody today? Okay, all right, all right. My seeds will outlive me. God invests in the sower. Somebody say, God invests in the sower. Again, this is 20 mysteries revealed to the sower. God invests in the sower. Galatians 26 and 12 through 14. I'm going to read just a little bit of it, but like pray go. Now Isaac sowed in the land, and he reaped the same year a hundredfold. That's, that's 12, right? Y'all with me? Isaac sowed in the land, and he reaped the same year. What? And. The Lord blessed him. Okay. He sowed. He reaped. And. See, you got to be looking for the ands in your life. Oh, man. You got to be looking for the ands in the scripture about your life. Yes, I sowed and I reaped what I sowed. But because I sowed, now God says, I want to do some more stuff. He said, and then he blessed him. And the man became rich and continued to grow richer until he became very wealthy. I want him to do that step. Rich. Richer. Wealthy. That's what I'm trying to. Somebody just help me right here. Rich. But it's, it's because he was a sower. Not as a result of what he sowed. Are y'all with me today? Not as a result of what he sowed, but because of his position as a sower. Because he was a sower and the Lord blessed him. And the man became rich and grew richer. Somebody say richer. Lord have mercy. I want to be richer in Jesus' name. Until, until he became wealthy. For he had possessions of flocks and herds and a, and a great household. Wait, what? Wait, 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 wait. Okay, let's go back. Isaac sowed. Somebody say, Isaac sowed. Isaac sowed. And he reaped what he sowed. But then God added to his life. He said flock. Now, you don't sow flocks. You sow seed. But because he sowed seed, he got flocks. I'm not ready for church today, man. <laughs> because he sowed in one place, he received something in another place. Some of y'all have sowed kindness, and because of your kindness, God said, I'm going to bring wealth to you. Because you've, been, because you've been faithful over here, I'm going to bless you over there. The Bible says he received the reward for what he sowed, but he also received flocks. Look, he also received a great household. Maybe, maybe my seed will affect what's happening with my kids. Maybe my seed will affect what's going on in my house. We planted some seeds a, a couple of weeks ago, a, a couple of weeks ago. Some of y'all wrote on envelopes, and we prayed over those envelopes. And some of y'all just wrote your kids' names. I love it. I sold here because I know God can do it over there. 
I sowed in this place for God to bless me in this place. Are y'all with me today? Because some people can testify in here that they've sowed in one place and they've received, they've reaped it in another place. And just because, just because you were a sower, God blessed you. Are y'all with me today? Okay. It, it, I need to read this last part because it's going to help me get to the... I need to read this last part because it's going to help me to get to the next part. Listen, the Bible says, and so the Philistines hated him. Think it not strange <laughs> when people hate you because you're blessed. Think it not weird when people hate you because you're blessed. I was talking to somebody the other day. They said, well, oh man, I'm getting into some stuff. I'm going to get in trouble. They say, he don't like me, so I don't like him. Oh, no, that's not how it works for me. In some senses or another, I can understand why he don't like me. I'm blessed. My family's blessed. My children are blessed. My cars are blessed. My house is blessed. My job is blessed. This church is blessed. Everything's blessed. And because of that, some people... Those are the people who I identify when I walk into a room and say, hey, man, oh, I love you so much, man. It's so good to see you. I'm just happy to see, man. How, how's your boy? Don't be surprised when people don't like you because you blessed. Can I deal with, can, can we move on from there? I don't want to spend a lot of time on her. I think y'all get that, okay? All right, what number are we on? Lord have mercy. He doesn't just supply, he multiplies. Okay? The Bible says, and my God shall supply my needs according to his riches and glory. But in 2 Corinthians 9 and 10, he says, now he who supplies seed to the sower, he supplies seed to the sower, and he supplies bread to the eater for food, he will supply and multiply the seed. I'm looking for God to multiply some stuff in my life. Some of y'all, you okay with addition, and that's fine. But I need some multiplication in my life so that I can do what God has called me to do, so I can be who God called me to be. Are y'all with me today? So say, so, so say God, multiply it, God. Now, 1 first, first Corinthians 9 11 says this. If we sow spiritual things in you, is it too much that we reap material things? Moving on. What's next? Ten. God's blessing is free. God's investment may cost you everything. God's blessing to the eater is free. Salvation is free. Right? It is the free gift of salvation. It is the gift of God. It, it, it is the free gift of God, salvation. But his investment may cost. The corn is not going to pick itself. Y'all right with me today? So if God blesses you with seed, you you may have to get out there and harvest it. I'm leaving that one. <laughs> All right, Matthew nineteen twenty nine. Just write this down. We we're not gonna turn that, but I'll read it to you. And everyone who left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or farms for my name's sake will receive many. Uh oh, <laughs> will receive many. Somebody say many. I'm expecting many to come into my life. We'll receive many times as much and we'll inherit, what else? Eternal life. Amen. Moving on. Okay, what's the next? Be careful of seed envy. Everybody does not want to see you successful. Ask Isaac. Right? We just talked about it. And the Philistines envied him. Does that make sense? Be careful of seed envy. Okay, moving on. Because y'all be talking about haters and hating each other and all this other stuff. Nobody don't hate you. You ain't done nothing yet. Do something first. Build something. You want to see haters? Build something. Build. Construct something. All them haters will line up and be like, what is he doing over there? With his crazy self. What is he? What's a God chaser? What the heck is? <laughs> Until you build something, don't leave. Nobody ain't worried about you. Nobody ain't think about you. 
All right, here we go. Diversity of, what number are we on? Diversity of seed is a dam against disappointment. Diversity of seed is a dam against disappointment. Pastor Dante, what does that mean? It means I'm just going to keep throwing seed. I'm just going to keep throwing seed. I'm just going to, some, some seed fell on thorny ground. Some seed fell on flat land. Some seed, but some seed fell on good soil. Some seed fell on good soil. And a lot of times the reason you're disappointed is because you put all your seed in him. I mean in. You gave too much too soon. With no reciprocity. And you're mad because you didn't harvest. Diversity of seed is a dam against disappointment. <laughs> Are y'all with me today? <laughs> you can't control the ground. You can only control your seed. Now, if I sow seed in a certain ground and that seed don't produce, I'm moving on. Like, I just helped all the single ladies in here. Are y'all with me today? I didn't say. It's not a multiplicity of seed. It's a diversity of seed, okay? The original note said a multiplicity of seed, and I had to think about it. I was like, no, Pastor Kev, that's not right. It's not more seed. Because that's the problem. You keep giving more to bad soil. More to bad soil. More to bad soil. You think you can make it right? You can't make it good soil. You can't control the soil, baby girl. You can only control the... What's the next one? For real. If you can't recognize it, you can't reap it. Oh, Lord, that's... If you can't recognize, I've been waiting to get to this one. I was like, where's that one? Where's that one? If you can't recognize it, you can't rip, reap it. The Bible says, lift up your eyes to the lift up your eyes and look to the fields, for the harvest is white, but the laborers are few. Listen, hear me right here. God's blessings are all around you. God's blessing, his favor in your life is all around you. But if you can't recognize it, you can't reap it. A lot of y'all, hear me right here, you, you, you don't allow somebody to be kind to you. You don't allow somebody to be nice to you. And so you keep, you got to allow kindness to come into your life. Somebody pay you a compliment at H-E-B, you all on Facebook. Girl, he was trying to get... He said, good morning. That brother said, good morning to you. Oh, they thirsty in H-E-B today. <laughs> you got to be able to look. I'm, this is not a women's conference. It's not a singles conference. I'm trying to help everybody in here. But you got to be able to recognize what God is trying to do in your life. You got to be able to try to see when somebody's trying to be a blessing to you. Lord Jesus, somebody, all people do is try to love on you and love on you and love on you. And you can't even recognize that blessing. Can't recognize that love. Then you leave the church. They don't like me. Who don't like you? What you talking about? I keep bringing my personal problems into this message. You got to be able to recognize it to reap it. If you can't recognize it, you can't reap it. I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for the people who say, look, Lord, God bless me. Or God bless me today. I got a little of this or I got a little of that. Or maybe it's just a good day outside. Thank you, Jesus, for the blessing of the Lord. 
We live in San Antonio. It's not 300 degrees outside. Thank you, Jesus, for the blessing of the Lord, because if I can recognize it, I can reap it. His blessings are all around me, but God won't bless what you won't recognize. Are y'all with me today? Okay, what's number we on? Okay, 14. The harvest is here. The harvest is here. Stop, stop, stop looking out there. Jesus said there's a familiar saying, in four months we shall reap the harvest. But what I'm telling you right now is if you got seed in the ground, the harvest is always ready. It's always a reaping time. It's always a reaping time for you. Every single day, God is doing something in your life. Do, do I have like four or five witnesses that could just say, God's moving in my life right now, today. I'm not waiting on some harvest. I'm not waiting for some preacher to tell me it's harvest time. Every day is harvest time because I got seed in the ground. The blessing of the Lord is not waiting on some time. The blessing of the Lord is perpetual. It's perpetual in your life. And if you just look up for a second and recognize, recognize what God is doing in your life, then you can reap what he's giving you. The harvest is not in four months. The harvest is here. Somebody say the harvest is here. All right, what's next? What number are we on? Seed equals sacrifice. Seed equals, Lord, have mercy, I wish I had time to really talk about this. You can't keep and reap. You can't keep and reap. That's not how it works. Either you're going to sow it and eat the fruit of it, or you're going to keep it and eat it. Some of y'all are just eating your seed. Well, you could sow it in the ground. You could sow it in the ground. You could sow it in the ground and watch God do something miraculous with it. Or you could just keep popping it in your mouth. Like a sunflower seed. You just, all your seeds is gone. Digest it. Digest it. Can I help my church real quick? Some of y'all eat out like you make more money than you do. Digest it. Money that you could be investing in your businesses, starting something up. You can make a sacrifice and eat you a sandwich. Uh, how dare Pastor Dante tell me to take a sandwich to work? All right. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. I'm trying to tell you to take that little bit and don't eat it. Call it a seed. Everything. Eat it. Y'all got Yelp reviews and everything. <sighs> Lord have mercy. R write down 1 Corinthians 15, 36, and I'm not going to read it. <laughs> they might put it on the screen just to help me, but I'm not going to read it. That's not me saying this. Paul wrote this book, so just in case you, you could write a letter to Paul. If y'all have any, if y'all ever have a problem and you want to email me, you can email me at Adriana at I am a God chaser. <laughs> <laughs> That's my official email address. Okay, moving on. Can we move on? Wheat and weeds look alike. Wheat and weeds look alike. Okay, I don't have time to read this, but uh, Matthew 12, uh, 24 through 30 says this. That, that there are some slaves, and they come to the master, and they say, Master, they're, they're, uh, the devil sowed some weeds where the wheat was. Should we go and get the weeds out of the wheat? And the master said, no, 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 no. No, 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 because when you try to take up the weeds, you're going to kill the wheat. Lord, have mercy. I'm helping some leaders in here right now. I'm helping some leaders because people who you think are weeds are really wheat. They just immature. So you got to wait till the wheat matures. The problem with weeds is that they never mature. 
So when the wheat matures and grows up, you can see clearly who's the weeds and who are the wheat. When they all mature, then you can say, oh, okay, okay, now, that was wheat. That was good. I, I sowed good into it. And these are weeds. Now I need to pluck. Are y'all with me today? You got to be able to identify your wheat from your weeds. Now, I'm going to leave this for a second, Jeff, because everybody's context is different. And then we can talk about church context and leadership all y'all want. But in your context, there is some wheat that you're identifying as weeds. And there is some weeds that you are identifying as wheat. You better wait till they grow up. You better wait till it matures. Some of the things you call bad are a blessing. You better wait till that kid matures. Or, or you better wait till that thing matures. You call it bad now, it's going to be a blessing later. You got to wait till it matures. Tell him, Andre, if that would have got rid of us when we were 16 and 17. My brother in here, man. You got to wait till that thing grow up. All of a sudden, it starts to grow up. You say, oh, no, no, no. It's good stuff right here. It's good stuff right here. It's good stuff right here. Hear my heart right here. My son didn't go to church for two years. When I had a church, he didn't attend church for two years. Now he in here more than y'all. If I would have got rid of him, before he matured. You got to let some things matriculate. God is maturing some things in your life. God is maturing some people in your life. And you got to wait on them. They growing up. Somebody say they growing up. They growing up. But it's got to be in your context. Amen. Are y'all with me? Okay. All right. Uh, so so I, I cheated. Okay. We and we's look alike was number 16. Number 17 was until they mature. Y'all got me? Moving on. We're almost finished. Y'all with me? Okay. I was like, wait a minute, 18 plus 3 is 21. I'm doing something wrong. But no, we okay, we go. <laughs> Crack me up. Okay. All right. <laughs> Are y'all ready? All right, here we go. Number 18. Say number 18. number 18. A sower sows the word. Okay? A sower sows the word. A sower sows the word. I'm not just sowing for good luck. I'm not just sowing into the universe. I'm sowing. Hear me right here. I'm sowing as a bet on the word of God. I'm so what I sow into the, what I sow into this earth, what I sow into my kids, what I sow into each one of y'all, what y'all sow into one another. It's a bet on the word of God that the word of God is true, and that whatever He said in it, He shall do it. And He said, "Whatsoever man sow it, that also shall he reap in great measure, pressed down and shaken together." Now I need you to get this. I need you to get to understand something. When you sow. So with the word in mind. The Bible tells me that I'm supposed to be the head, not the tail. I don't just want to be, I don't just want to be blessed so I can talk about people who aren't. I want to be blessed so I can look like what God said I should look like on this earth. He said I should look like a lender. You get mad when people call you and ask you for money. God said that's what you're supposed to look like. That don't mean you got to always say yes. Oh. I just saved myself some phone calls right there. But you're supposed to look like a lender. People are supposed to call you and ask you for your help, for your advice. You're supposed to look like a lender. I sowed this. Of course I'll grow it. I sowed it. And if you, if you sow it, it should be based on the word of God. That your family will be blessed. 
that your children will be blessed. You got to be, you got to have enough work. That's why I want you reading your Bible. You can't just take what I'm saying as face value. You got to go read your Bible so you know enough word to know where to sow. Are y'all with me right here? You got to know enough word to know where to say. You, you got to know that your family is supposed to be blessed, that your household is supposed to be blessed. When I put a seed in the ground, I'm not just giving some money so they can keep the lights on at God tables. I'm sowing in a place that I know God is trying to do something in my life based on the word of God. Because he said, whatever I sow, I'm going to reap. Are y'all with me today? Good. So, so a sower sows the word. Psalms 119 and 105 says this, your word is a lamp to my feet. It's a light into my pathway. If you, if you, you'll have more clarity if you read more word. You'll have more clarity. I'm not asking you, I'm not asking you to play the, the Holy Ghost lottery. I'm asking you to, to, to respond to the word of God in relation to your life. Are y'all with me today? Because of this, because of number 19. Somebody say number 19. Because God's not fair. Mm. Mm. Start the car, Chauncey. I'm in trouble already. God's not fair. Somebody say God's not fair. You were scared to say it. But God's not fair. If God was fair, everybody would have the same amount of money. They would live in the same place had the same houses. If God was fair, everything would be equal. God's not fair, he's just. The Bible says a, a, a king, uh, you don't have to turn there like Prego, it's in there. The Bible says a king gave out distributed talents, distributed money to his servants. He said he gave one of them five, he gave another one three, and he gave another one one according this is what we miss this is what we miss according to what they would do with it wait he knew ahead of time he wasn't surprised when they came back he knew the one he gave one that sucker was going to come back with one that's why I only gave you one because all you were going to do is come back with one God's not fair he's just he knows just what you're going to do with what he gave you now, here is the principle. If I can figure out how to escape my level, then all of a sudden, when I used to only be qualified for the one, now I'm qualified for the three. Because I figured out how to escape my level. Oh, man. Y'all got to understand me. I escaped my level. I'm supposed to still live in the East Terrace. Still live in a Wheelie Court. I'm supposed to still be there. I escaped my level. How you escape your level? I gave. I gave my way out of poverty. I know it's hard. You don't got to clap. I learned how to escape my level. Even the IRS is nicer to me. Because everything I gave, they can't tax me for. I need you to hear me because there are some things that if you learned how to give, you wouldn't be taxed so much. There's a favor that's related to the giver. There is forgiveness that's related to the giver. And if you learn how to be generous in your life, this is related to the to the to the plant a new seed. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Because as I plant a new seed, I reap a new harvest. I reap a harvest of generosity because I planted a seed of generosity. Does that make sense? Are y'all with me today? Did I lose y'all on this one? God's not fair. The only way to break out of your level is to give your way out. Or you're going to be a one talent person for the rest of your life. Listen, I, I really, this is hard preaching, but hear me right here. I don't want to pastor broke people. I will. I will. But I sure don't want to. If I could see you move from one level to the next level, 
If I can see you move, if I can see you escape the level you're on, I'll be a better pastor. I'll be blessed. I'll be a blessed pastor if you can escape the level you're on. The Bible said the poor you will always have. I'm not here to tell you, I'm not here to tell you that all y'all gonna be rich. What I am here to tell you is you don't have to be poor. God's not fair. If you started with one talent, do something with the one talent so that God can move you up to two or three or five. You gotta, it's what you do with it. If you eat it at McDonald's, you're only going to get bread, eater. <laughs> Pastor Dante, God is fair. No, he's not. Look, the Bible says other seeds fell on good soil. Mark chapter 4, verse 8. Write that down. Other seeds fell on good soil. As they grew up, as they what? I'm just trying to help some people in here. As they, okay, as they grew up, what happened? They increased. Now, here's my problem. This is the tension in the text. This is the issue. I wish it was a period right there. So then I wouldn't have to tell y'all about this next part, but it's not a period, it's a comma. That means we gotta keep going. As they grew up, they increased. I want all y'all to grow up and increase. But it says some yielded 30, some yielded 60, and some 100. Wait, what? That's not right, Pastor Kevin. That's not fair. God isn't fair. He's just. He gives you just what you deserve. That's how just God is. He'll give you just, and some 30, some 60, and some 90, or some 100 fold. But now, this is the part that, that should help somebody in here. I don't deserve the 30. I didn't deserve the 30. If God only gave me 30 fold, I didn't deserve that. Whatever he gave me, I didn't have before he gave it to me. I'm going to thank God for my 30. Is there anybody in here who said, I'm just going to thank God for my 30? I don't care if you got 60. God bless you. If you got 60, God bless you. If you got 90. But are there any 30 fold people in here that can just say, thank you, Jesus, that at least I got it. I ain't mad at nobody because they drive a nice car. I'm trying to go to the car wash and wash mine up, make it shine like they car shine. I'm going to live a, oh man, hear me. Let me help you right here. You better learn how to live, the, live a blessed 30 life. You need to learn how to live a blessed 30 life. Stop worrying about what's happening on the 60 level, what's happening on the life. God can do what he want to do with them. God can bless them, but he already blessed me. He blessed me with 30. I'm happy with my 30 life. Anybody content with a 30 life in here? Because whatever I got, he gave me. My granny used to sing the song. So whatever I got, he gave me. And whatever I am, he made me. Thank you, Jesus, for my 30. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be content with my 30. Some of y'all need to learn contentment. I'm going to learn contentment with my life. Yeah, we talked about this. He tied one time. Nothing grew old, I mean, it ain't real. God said, no, I was trying to see what you was worth to me. Trying to see if you could be faithful. Trying to see if you could be consistent. 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 Because if I'm a sower, I want to look like God, and God is consistent. Last one. What number is this? I hope this helps out. Is, 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 did this help? <laughs> number 20 is this. Number one was almost true. Number 20 is this. Number one almost true. What was number one? Number two was almost true. I must have inverted those. 
Oh, I thought this was so good. I thought I had it, Pastor Kevin. I thought this was going to Steve, I thought this was the. Number two was almost true. Number 20 is that number two was almost true. Are y'all with me? Who's still confused? <laughs> Hands went up all over the building. Father, in the name of Jesus. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. The Bible says that I grow what I sow. Whatsoever man is sowing, that also shall he reap. Except, except Michelle, except in, in, in Psalms, there's something so significant. I'm, I'm going to, Psalms 126 and 5. It says this. It says that what I sowed in tears, I reap in joy. What I sowed in tears. Some of y'all have sown and sown and sown and sown in tears. And God says, this is the season. This is the moment. I'm about to give you beauty for your ashes. I'm about to give you joy for your sorrow. Is there anybody here that says, I sowed in tears, Lord? I sowed in tears. I was patient. I was patient and I've been patient and, I, and I've been waiting, God. And I believe you're gonna do it. I believe you're gonna turn my life around. I sowed in tears now. God said, if you sowed in tears, you're gonna reap. This is the only place where, where number two is not true. Because every other place where you sow, you reap back. Except right here, if you sowed in tears, God said, there is a necessary blessing for some tears that you cried. And he hasn't, come on, I'm done. And he hasn't forgotten about you. He hasn't forgotten about you. In the book of Proverbs, the Bible says, he, he, he captures your tears. He collects them. I believe there's some people in here, you, 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 you've been sowing, not, not for some monetary thing, you content. You've been sowing for God to make a change in your life. You've been sowing for God to do something new in your life, for God to do something supernatural. In fact, there's some people in here, you say, God, I, I'm believing you for the supernatural. I don't know how it's going to work out. Some of y'all in those kind of situations, those impossible situations, that nobody can do it, nobody can fix it except for God. And God said, I haven't forgotten about you, baby. I haven't forgotten about you. What you have invested in me, I have invested in you. This is the season now where God said, I'm about to start returning back to you what you thought you lost. The years that the canker worms ate up, the earthworms, they ate it up. He said, the, the years that the moths ate it up. You thought, you hear, hear me right here. Some of y'all, you, you, you turned 40, or you turned 50, or you turned 60, and you thought you missed it. But God said, I, I, I'm the redeemer of time. He said, and because of what you've sown, I'm about to start giving you the best years of your life. You thought those years were gone. I'm about to give you the best years of your life. In fact, receive this. If you can just raise your hands and receive this, I want to prophesy over my whole church. God said, I'm about to start giving you the best years of your life. He said, you cried. You cried. Listen here, I'll, I'll, I'll say this already in preparation for the new year. You cried all last year. You went through hell in 2019. You, you, you went through hell in 2019, but God said, I'm about to start restoring the joy. You're going to smile again. You're going to laugh again. And listen, he said, the situation might not change, but I'm changing you in it. He said, the circumstance might not change, but I'm changing you. Listen, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, the fire may not get put out, but I'm going to make you indestructible. He said, I'm, I'm doing it in your life. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, lift your hands, lift your hands. I want to speak this over you. God said, he's restoring you. He's restoring you. He's restoring you. Everything you thought you lost, come on, come on. If you pray, pray in the spirit. If you know how to pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. He said, everything you thought you lost, everything you thought you lost, everything you thought you lost, he said, I'm restoring it to you. Some of y'all, you thought you were supposed to have a different career. God said, no, I needed you where, where you are. I needed to use you in this way. You thought you were supposed to have a different circumstance. God said, I needed you. I needed you to do it like this. Because you didn't realize that in this context, I'm the sower. And you're the seed. And I sowed you where I needed you. God said, your children will be healthy. 
Oh, I think I'm helping somebody right now. He said, your children will be healthy. They will be blessed. Hear me right here. God said, I'm, I'm going to return some things back to you. You thought you should be in a better financial situation. God said, I'm, I'm about to start moving things around. I'm about to start shifting things right now. He said, but you got to get this in your heart. You got to trust me. You got to become a soul. He said, and I'm going to return it back to you. Some 30. Some 30. Yes, God, some 30. I'm going to be grateful for the 30. Some 60. But I'm going to be grateful for the 60. But some 100 fold. If you believe that's you today, can you put your hands together and just thank God for a 100 fold blessing? Thank you, God. Come on, stand to your feet. Receive it right now. Come on, put those hands together all over this building. We're going to give God praise for the blessings that I haven't seen yet. I haven't seen it yet, but I got seed in the ground. I haven't seen it yet, but I have. Look at somebody and say, I haven't seen it yet, but I got seed in the ground. And I know it's working for me. I know it's working for me. I know it's working for me. I believe it's working for me. I sold too much. I gave too much. I was too generous. And God said, I got seed in the ground. It's coming back to me coming back to me. I believe that. Listen. I believe that. Listen. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I, I, I want to introduce you to the sower today. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You, you might have come here and said, Pastor Dante, I, I'm not absolutely sure that I even believe in Jesus. I tell you what, he believes in you. You might not believe in him, but he believes in you. He loves you. He cares you, and he's calling you to a relationship with him. If that's you today, we're going to all say a prayer. I would that you would say it with us. We're going to say it. Everybody's going to say it so nobody feels alone. But when we say this prayer, I believe if you mean it in your heart, today could be the day when everything changed. This is the day that the Lord has made. You got to choose to rejoice and be glad in it. If that's you today, repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Change my heart. Come into my life. Change my life. Father, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Listen, if you said that prayer for the first time, or, or you just said, Pastor Dante, I believed it for the first time, I want you to take one more step of faith. I'm going to count to three, and when I get to three, I just want you to raise your hand as high as you can raise it. Number one, nobody's going nobody's gonna to pick on you. Nobody's going to ask you any questions. We just want to pray with you. Number two, it doesn't matter how you got here. It doesn't matter who invited you. The only thing that matters is that you were drawn by the Holy Spirit, and God wants to do a new thing in your life. If that's you, three, raise your hand as high as you can raise it. I believe... You are saved today. Thank you, Jesus. And the saints are rejoicing. Come on. Come on. Keep those hands up. And the saints are rejoicing. Come on, God, Jesus. And the saints are rejoicing all over the building. Come on. Come on. He has never.